Hey, what's up, guys? It's Joel Benavides with the Squawk Out Podcast. I am joined today by Rob Hernandez. He's running for City Council District 6. Say hi, Rob. Hey, guys. And I'm also joined, of course, again, by our favorite co-hosts here on Squawk Out, uh, Raymond Chapa from the On Call Podcast, joining us from the International Space Station. Raymond? What's up? What's up? I'm here in my, uh, my bunker, if whatever you want to call it, my panic room. It looks good, man. Thank you. I like this thing up here. Oh, my arm disappears. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what's it, what's good? What's good? Nothing. Uh, we're me and uh, Rob were talking before you came on. We're just kind of going over the day. It's just I guess it's been a busy day on our end. Just mainly house stuff for me. But it sounds like Rob, you were busy, huh? Yeah, um, I'm still trying to put up signs. I, like I said, I, this is kind of, the campaign's kind of just a one-man show, so I woke up early, I go put out signs. Uh, so you see my sign, um, know that I've been there. You know what I mean? I'm not hiring people to put these signs up or anything like that. I've gone <laughs> that street, you know what I mean? I put those signs up, and then when the election's over, you see my sign up, uh, send me a, a message so I can go take it down. Um, so I did that in the morning and then uh, went to one of the polling sites, talked to people for a little bit, and then from there uh, went to go do a shoot around. Uh, and then from there, uh, I don't even know, some stuff on social media, and then pizza, went to get pizza, and then now we're here. Hey, so there you go. I didn't, day. I didn't get a chance to browse your social media today. Did you have any main, like, major announcements or? Well, not necessarily, just uh, was. Um, I think it's Cablewood. Cablewood um, goes in that neighborhood, just kind of one of the neighborhoods that I th- I believe gets overlooked um, all the time in this district. Kind of just going there, block walking, um, going to um, also at that library. But other than that, didn't really get to post too much on social media. I got to get better at that, uh, posting stuff. Yeah, that's kind of – social media is kind of like one of the main platforms now I'm, for politics and pretty much everything. I yeah, yeah, it's um, it is, it is, um, and it's kind of strange because I'm looking at like from the outside, like from inside, kind of seeing how things are, how the different candidates are running their kind of campaigns and stuff. There's some that are just doing a lot of um, virtual meetings and not a lot of block walking. There's some that are doing a lot of block walking. So it's a learning experience. How does that work right now? If somebody is having like a a uh, uh like a, or if the, the city council is having a meeting um is is any of it being like still taking place in po- uh, in in person or is it like all like the actual city council meetings are they I, are they I, as far as i know I, I believe they are doing um council meetings in like um meeting like actual meeting meetings right right uh, in person Oh, I was saying they're doing them in person. It's not like a Zoom meeting or anything like that. I think there's some that are Zoom meeting and some are kind of um, in person. I think it's just depending on the meeting. Right on. So, um, Rob, I feel like uh, we should give you a, a shot here early on in the podcast to uh, give us like an outline of of your background and experience. We mentioned that you were going uh, that you were running for city council district six, uh, and it here in San Antonio. Uh, I guess you, you you said it much more eloquently than I did. It's kind of like the 151 corridor between 410 and I-10 with a couple of chunks inner city and, and out of town, right? Yeah, it goes from pretty much um, Callahan to 36th Street to Casarillo, Casarillo to 90. Uh, 90 kind of it shoots off to Petranco Military out to 1604, 1604 almost to kind of... Um, Tesla and Grism, and then back down to Ingram. Right, so, right. And, and then and then Government Canyon. Yeah, uh, and, was, and then uh, there's like a little string attached to um, Government like a, Canyon. And, right, like a road leading out to Government Canyon. Uh, is that a state park? That's a state park, right? That's a state park, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so what are some of the unique air like uh, issues affecting like that there within city uh, with, within District Six? I think some of it. District 6 is a wide district, and it has um, different elements in the sense that towards the inner part of the town, it's a lot of um, things that uh, a lot of 
street repairs that are needed, just infrastructure, basic infrastructure, just uh, roads, sidewalks, and stuff like that. That's and in the inner have, city parts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, kind of in the um, almost the Edgewood area, Cuellar Park 36, Old Highway 90, Eric, oh, I guess Eric Burr, um Highway is it called now. Um, in that area, um, just even having a food desert over there. And then you get kind of more to the 1604 area, and it is um, it is busy, busy, busy. A um, lot of growth out there. A um, lot of new um, apartments coming up, new houses, new subdivisions, all in that area. So it's a it's a complex district, um, different issues. Um, so like I said, over there, they're more I think more. One of I guess traffic is one of the bigger things, 1604, and just in that area, just kind of how it's uh, becoming almost like Houston was back in the day when you're sitting in traffic for an hour and a half trying to get anywhere in that area. Yeah, man. Um, and then also what I would think is um, taxes, you know, property taxes going above what people can afford and kind of making sure that kind of gets in check. Yeah, I'm so a as, District 6 re- resident. We did definitely see our taxes go up, like our, our property taxes over the last few years. So if you were to, you know, if you were to get elected, what what is some of the, I guess, what would be the outline of what you would want to do if you were, you know, elected? So one of the one things, so my three, my, my three main things are COVID recovery and then housing. and COVID then- recovery as in... Um, uh, one of the one things I would like, and the city's getting there. It just, I, I just felt like, and I think it might be that some of the pressure of the election is the election is making these, uh, the council people move. So one of the one things that took forever to get going was the, um, the vaccine registry. You know what I mean? That should have been done a long time ago. Uh, that's one of the one things. Once we get more people sh- shots and everything, then we can kind of get back to opening and everything. Um, another one is just teaming up with Meals on Wheels to get our most elderly and um, our homebound seniors um, vaccinations. Another thing that I would, I would like to see is a um, program through the city to help um, businesses that went under during the pandemic. I know there's loans and stuff. Even if it's just resources, how to connect. Uh, you, know, you might have a business and you couldn't pay the rent or, and then you whatever took money out. Now you got to pay that back and then you didn't pay that. So now your credit's low. And you're just struggling to get back up. But you've had your business for five years, so I would make a program where the city would come in and kind of help you out, get you back on your feet because you know how to run a business, you know how to keep a payroll, you know how to just kind of help the community have employees. And I think that's one of the quicker ways. I know we have a job training program, but sometimes people don't want new skills. You know what I mean? People are just happy doing their job, and they just want their job back. And that's one of the things I would do with the COVID recovery. There's a lot of nuances associated with a lot of the stuff you're saying. And like, um, like, I, I like, I, I want to get, cause you know, like uh, with, with politics, you know, oftentimes when you're talking to a politician or you're consuming content online, you're getting sound bites and bullet points and stuff like that. But so, and, and it all sounds good, you know, like, uh, people from, from all walks of life can really get behind a well-placed bullet point. But once we start getting into those, uh, like into the details, that's kind of where the interpretation of those bullet points come out and, and, and people bounce heads off, like off of those, off of those things. What would you say is one of the, like, uh, one of the things that is, I guess, for example, uh, you mentioned that, you know, everybody wants to see roads and infrastructure get improved but you know the those taxes are going to come out and then some people might have a problem for example with property taxes going up so like how how do you do that how do you balance um you know not overtaxing people on their property and 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 getting people the the services the public services that they want yeah, yeah, and it's a it's a balancing act. I mean, it's a balancing yeah. act. Some of it is just kind of making sure we're good stewards with our money, making sure that we are funding the right programs. And and what I mean by infrastructure, sometimes in the inner part of the district, inner city of the west side, that that doesn't mean a four lane road. It means a road that doesn't have bumps. That you're not uh, sliding your tire going through. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it means a sidewalk to a bus stop. 
it's not like we're you know, i mean some of these some some places in the district you can't walk down those sidewalks i was block walking uh, talking to a lady and she said she was just trying to get into from the sidewalk to her house and she tripped on a crack on the floor you know what i mean it's basic stuff like that like when you go into like over there by Quayar and over here by anton jones it, you know, I mean, the roads are destroyed. There's grass everywhere. You know, what I mean, and then you go out here to 1604, and it's nice, beautiful six-lane street. And it's like, you know, I mean, there's totally different. It's and like I said, I think some of the part of the district, the inner part of the district, has been left behind. You know, what I mean, and um, just being able to kind of making sure we're spending our money correctly, just with like everything else. Like, I mean, you have a household, you got to take care of your household. You can't be spending money. You can't have. Um, 15 streaming services when you're not paying your um, your your Wi-Fi bill. You know what I mean? Kind of like that. We, like one of the example is uh, um, out there by um, Casablanca. I know they're doing construction there because they got big, but they just built it about two years ago. It's like, why was it this plan for already? You know what I mean? Um, just kind of making sure we're good stewards with our money um, and just kind of see where we can pull money or how do, how do we develop in the community. The more, the more we have income coming in the more tax money we have to spend right on man uh i i think we we jumped over a little bit of your history real quick before we uh get too for too much further in tell me about like uh your work history as a i, I guess you'd call it a a, a civic servant or a, or a civic uh uh, service person with house and recs and your background like within the community center here and stuff like that most definitely so um I'm pretty much a sanitary kid from the start. You know what I mean, I uh, I spent a lot of time when I was younger, a lot of times in parks and rec, uh, community centers and stuff like that, going through the cold program. I don't remember. I don't know if y'all remember the cold program. You get a little card, kind of like a little clubhouse thing. You would go hang out at the park, um, make little discounts. They would wear free soda. Bus oh rides. yeah, yeah, we had that on the south side, I think, and yeah. I completely forgotten about that. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I was in the parks, and then uh, as I just stayed in the park playing ball all the time, spending time in the parks. Um, They're like, you're here all the time. I'm going to put you on the payroll. So they, somebody um, got me on the payroll. Payroll. So then I I worked the um, parks. I worked um, Garza, Melendres, Cuellar, and then um, from there just kind of worked in the parks for a couple years, and then I ended up working. Um, Applying at um, a local nonprofit, got a job there. I worked uh, in dealing with homelessness. Um, worked a couple years in the residential side of it, where just kind of making sure the dorms were kind of okay and no, everybody was following rules and, and kind this, of the dorms in the, the dorm. Real quick, just uh, the dorms in the homeless shelter. Yes. yes okay. The dorms uh, in the homeless uh. shelter, um, and then from there, I moved departments to housing, and I've been in housing for the last five years. Uh, so last, I worked like last nine years in that um, homeless shelter, and then the last five years been in the housing department. Um, so I've seen kind of a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, um, what was that like? What was it like working with like the, you know, like mental health run, tends to run high, I think, in the homeless community and stuff like that. So what was that like, like dealing with like those kind of extreme personalities and situations? It, it, like, can you give us an anecdote? Uh, one of the first nights I was there, uh, one of the first nights I was at, I was working, I think overnights or I don't know why I switched over to overnights. And then, uh, I went and there's a guy in the, in, I guess the main courtyard and he has, uh, he has mental health issues and, uh, it's obvious. And then we, ha uh, we have safety officers there. And so, uh, they come out here, they talk to him, they try to get him back in there. So there's like a curfew. They try to get him in, and then he kind of rushes the officer, and they had to kind of tase him. And that was kind of like, boom, like kind of like welcome to overnight. Well, you know what I mean? <laughs> welcome was, to like, the wow. job. And, and it opened my eyes. And then also, like, another thing that opened my eyes, especially the homeless population, I, I hate when sometimes people talk like, oh, we got to get rid of this. Like, we got to fix homelessness. We're not going to we're not gonna really fix it unless we get to the underlying issues, such as addiction and mental health. But also, there is there is a homeless population that is just an average population. Uh, people that so example is I uh, a lot of my clients, especially uh, guys, um, sometimes they're working two jobs and they're making two thousand two thousand uh, a month, 
Mm-hmm. And it might seem a lot, but half of it goes to child support. You know what I mean? And so it leaves them with a thousand. And so they really can't afford anything with a thousand, especially if they have a car. That's an extra $400. You know what I mean? Insurance, another $100. So now you're living off $500 a month. And it's really hard to find um, good units at that price. Um, so, I mean, and it's just working population. It, it, like I said, everything's expensive now. Um, I've seen, I started off like, I can't even remember when I started off. Uh, like, right coming out of the financial crisis. So there's a lot of uh, people who were just looking for jobs. And that was towards found- the end of the financial crisis and like after the the book or right when bush was leaving yeah yeah uh, like 2008 yeah yeah, yeah 2008, 2008 yeah yeah so when i when i first started working in the shelter there was a lot of people that had skills that were just needing a job to kind of you know what i mean they just didn't have they weren't jobs out so it was kind of difficult and then uh once the economy started recovering and everything then it became a different clientele a more um clientele that would say more hunted more mental health and more um addiction and then we're kind of now and then towards right before the pandemic it was i think more of an elderly population people that were getting taxed out of their house or what was happening was they lived somewhere or lived in an apartment a small apartment and the owner sold it to somebody somebody came in remodeled it and then jacked up the prices two three hundred dollars and they couldn't afford that and then they really didn't have nowhere else to go so that was kind of like before the pandemic, um, and right right now it's kind of the same as elderly and kind of mental health and addiction. Have you and have you have you seen have you seen it get worse during the pandemic? Have you seen crazy things since the like unique things since all this happened? Uh, yeah, the one thing I I seen more is more um, homelessness on the streets, on the corners and uh, encampments and stuff like that. I saw um, that in what, Austin a couple a uh, couple of weekends ago. It was like uh more more, more than because austin always kind of has been a little worse than san antonio i think but i mean it's like on every on every corner everybody's camped out like in tents under every highway yeah and it's coming like that over here um some you you see camps on the side of the road going through downtown and stuff like that um but i that's the one thing i've seen um and that could be a little bit of kind of stuff i know where i'm at we're at a lower capacity just because of the covid uh, we are trying to get other um, options out there. Um, so it could be a few things. And also, a lot of times is, um, how you say it, families are kind of scared to take people in. Um, I think that's always been kind of, especially in San Antonio, uh, among, like, um, youth, it's like just kind of couch surfing. And so now with the pandemic stuff, it's kind of like that kind of put people on the streets too, where it's like, hey, man, you know what I mean? I do want you here, but I really can't with my kids and stuff like that. How does that system work? Is that is that system where you take somebody in? Is that like uh, uh, handled through the city or who handles that? Like when you help somebody out in that way, is that all churches and volunteer organizations? As, as far as the shelter I work at um, right now, it at one point it was through all through the city especially during the, like the middle of the pandemic but now it's kind of more of a we're opening up more so it's kind of like it was before you just kind of show up on a certain day and there's an intake process and then if they have room they will kind of fit you in those rooms okay but but they're rooms right like you're not farming it out to somebody's like home or something like that right no no no, no, no. Oh, okay. it's on the shelter. yeah it's on the shelter oh okay cool cool um so uh was, oh, can what? we go back a little bit? Go for it, man. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess um, growing up, um, like, where did you go to school? Like, you know, how did you come up, like, getting into what you're into right now? So uh, I went to Sparta Elementary. I was a, a, a flying eagle. And then I went to Saw Ross Middle School, um, a rebel. And then I went to Holmes High School. Um, and then I Huskies. did a little bit of Sorry. Yeah, Huskies. <laughs> what year did you graduate? I was class of 2000, man. Wow, I was class of 2001. Oh, okay. All right. So you're how, right behind how, me. How old are you? I am 39. Oh, yeah, snap. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. You got the gray hair. I'm working yeah, on it. I'm trying hair. to catch up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the gray hair is what... It's funny because when I'm out campaigning, uh, I, I don't my little flyer on the website, or not the website, my Instagram, it's me in a suit and... I usually have my hat on, and nobody's like, Who, "Are you? That's you?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I gotta take my hat off." They're like, "Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I see it now." 
Um, so yeah, I went through all that side. So um, you have um, you have a thirty nine year old face. It's just like that adds like distinction. You know what I mean? Like I've always wanted gray hair, so I'm kind of fucking jealous, man. <laughs> I'll give you some of my grays, bro. Uh, get, <laughs> come bring it in. <laughs> oh, do you, so, uh, Raymond, do you have gray or not? Yeah, my hair is. What what age did that start? Mine mine was turning gray in seventh and eighth grade. Oh, uh, my brother, my brother, the same thing. He started going gray like when he was 15, 16. And me, I started getting a little bit in my late teens, early twenties. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I do notice that with the gray, my hair gets a little straighter, so it's not as curly. So I don't, don't know. Don't worry about it, bro. I'll Photoshop it out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's on Ross. I had um gray hair and it was like, man, they're like, man, how old are you? What are you? What, what's going on in your life? <laughs> that, that <laughs> um, so then, yeah. So then, like I said, um, was it just in the parks? And that's how it first started, just kind of being in the parks. And they're like, man, you're here all the time. Just kind of, we'll put you on the payroll. Started working at Garza, the after school program for a little bit, just kind of uh, monitoring the kids. And they came from school um, and just talking to the parents and then just kind of any sports that was going on, kind of jumping in there. And then from there, I kind of uh, started a basketball team, uh, Team Beast. Uh, some of the kids from Melendres Community Center and from John Jay and Kennedy. I can't remember what else schools we had out there. And then um, it died for a little bit. And then one day I was kind of just looking for, just online, looking for uh, another job. And then it kind of almost seemed similar uh, working at the um at the shelter, kind of monitoring people, making sure rules are followed, making sure stuff is kept up. And I was like, that's what I do at the center. I monitor people, make sure they're not fighting and stuff. I applied. And honestly, I didn't think I got the job. It was, it was a, I had, I was applying to other places and um, it was just in your resume. And then it said, okay, when I sent it, it said, thank you. And I was like, oh, okay, that's it. And then a few days later, I got the call, went in, did the interviews and ended up at um, working at the shelter. Um, and then just kind of started, talking to people and just kind of from there it kind of grew and then i said went to housing and then from housing um that's where i'm at right now and kind of just talking to people kind of seeing what i don't know how you say it kind of like seeing issues come up is what kind of drove me to start running you think about running for council in a sense like the housing crisis um covid just stuff not being done even in during the winter storm like why didn't we have warming shelters before i mean the news was out there that the storm was coming in i know we were getting excited about the snow more than anything not thinking it was going to be what it became you know what i mean like, i oh, didn't understand snow. i didn't understand i remember being frustrated at the time and i remember being so frustrated that i tweeted Ray, uh, mayor ron nuremberg and i mean i'm sure he gets tweets all the time and i wasn't expecting for him to like personally read it but i did write something like you know why weren't we preparing for this a week ago you know we knew it was coming so i don't know it was just i remember being frustrated with it yeah and i mean and then so like i said and it came up and then it was like let me try it man let me try it um let me see what i can do and i mean i'm and then now I'm here, man. So I hope that answer. And it's sometimes I kind of go off base, but no, that's fine. Can... That's fine. Yeah, this, no, you're good. This is the format. Yeah, yeah. This is what it's all about. So, um, so just to drill down on, or to get more specific on, now you're here. Where is here? Have you received endorsements? Have you received nominations from any parties? Are you running as an independent? How does that work? So I'm I'm conservative. I'm conservative. Um, but and I and I kind of hate that with the politics, especially at a local level, conservative. And like right now, there's something on my Facebook where some guy is kind of trolling me every day, like, "Oh, he's a Republican. He's a Republican." And I'm like, I saw the yeah, I saw the gray face. I was kind of I was snooping in on your Facebook, and I noticed he was saying like, "He's a Republican. He's a Republican." And then I was just kind of like, "What?" I was just like, "Oh," I was like, "Okay." I mean, I was yeah, I, I noticed that too. <laughs> so yeah. so, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So he like every day, like every day around nine o'clock, once he wakes up, he kind of gets on my face. <laughs> I'm Republican, and, I, oh, and at first I was trying to tell him like I, I am a Republican, but I have this other side, and and then so now I'm just telling him thank you for your support, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, as as a Republican, you know, I don't 
as a Republican, I'm not a Republican. I'm fucking left as ever. But I mean, I also have family members, you know, people close to me that are more conservative, you know, that weren't Trump supporters or anything like that. But I mean, at a local level, is that even an issue or does that even? And that was my first argument to him. It was like, it's a nonpartisan um, election. And uh, he just kept on coming. But um, I just think, like I said, the whole Republican and Democrat thing, um, I think and that's why I'm running because I'm getting tired of just people arguing. It's just like every time we see me argue, argue, argue. I know I was going through, I was snooping on y'all's podcast. I think uh, something, so one of y'all said something about being naive to think that maybe it's going to change. That Obama had tried it and it's not going to ever change. Oh yeah. And so, so, but I, I want to, I want to try it. Like, you know, what I mean, that's just the way I am. Like, I'm not. I want to sit there and listen um, to what people have to say. I think the one thing is we're so polarized right now that we won't even get into the room with people to listen what people have to say. Um, like, you know, what I mean, and it, it's kind of, it's kind of sad. Or it's kind of like. Yeah, you're team Republican or team Democrat, but at the end of the day, we're San Antonians. You know what I mean, we're all from San Antonio, and we got to live together. And this whole you stand for that, you stand for that, or this and this, it's like okay, but we got we got to kind of sit down in the room and listen to each other because that's the only way we're gonna get stuff done. You know what I mean? If it's like everybody wants to take the ball and go home, but nobody wants to sit there and play and kind of you know what I mean sit down and hash things out. And you know what I mean? Another point. I kind of I'm trying to bring to make sure people understand is that I'm gonna listen to everything. You know what I mean? If it, and and I think sometimes liberal Democrat they all like the Republicans think the liberal Democrats are just kind of terrible, and the Democrats think the Republicans are terrible. But it's like at the end of the day, we have most common thing, things are in common. We want to be safe. We want to be able to prosper. We want you know what I mean? We want to make sure our kids have the are able to prosper and the tools to prosper. But people so, want to people want to see blood in the streets, bro. That's <laughs> yeah. that's that's well, what that's what it is. Me and Raymond were talking about this where like like earlier after we got off and it was like, you know, that 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 is entertaining and I think it sells clicks and stuff like that. And so that's I think why it's hard for news agencies and media outlets to get behind, you know, something that's just everybody singing Kumbaya, you know, they want to sing the blood and you're right at a local level to some degree, you know, if you're not talking about services for property taxes, it's all kind of the same thing. There is uh, from what I saw when I was involved with politics years ago was that there is infighting, uh, but it's, not even along party lines. Like it's just like old rivalries going back 20, 30 years and people being pissed off at each other about some campaign promise or some, you know, funds that were misappropriated or something like that. Yeah. Oh, the more I'm into it, the more, I mean, the more I see it's those, it's a little bit of who knows who, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, exactly. Those, exactly. Yeah. You know I mean, and it's, and it's, like uh, i'm kind of I'm, I'm fairly open i'm like i said i don't have i kind of want the criticism because to me it's a learning experience you're never going to get better you're never going to get better or learn anything if you're comfortable if you stay in that same area you're not going to grow you know what i mean and i think Love that's it. what sometimes people i think especially some politicians that have been there for a while or just think that things should be handed to them you know what i mean um i'm trying to think back some team said that i forgot who it was I was watching some sports and they're like, oh, we haven't won the championship since we haven't gotten a championship since eight from like 18, like five or six years ago. I'm like, you don't get championships. You got to win these things. You know what I mean? It's not given to you. I think some of these politicians think that, that it's given to them, that they're entitled to have stuff. And I think some of the workings are like that, too. It's an incumbent superiority complex. Yeah. Talk yeah, to me yeah, about yeah. your incumbent. Joel Who's over? Big words. I know, dude. <laughs> get get one Bud Light in me, and I'm um uh, Einstein. You show me the glass. <laughs> um, talk to me about your incumbent. Who's over there in District Six? It's uh, Melissa, right? Yeah, Melissa's um, out here. Um, I don't know too much. I know she's a disability lawyer. Um, and like I said, uh, I'm not really kind of running again. I don't know too much of her. That's one of the one things I kind of am running. Why? And it's hard to say because I'll say I'm not running against her, but it's one of the one things that kind of ticked me off is like I would always see other councilmen, uh, Trevino and stuff like that in the news, stating where they where they stand, and I never really kind of 
I'd be like, oh, I wonder where our district, our councilman stands on this. And it was just never nothing. I could never, like, I mean, even little things in, I would go back and um, kind of see, like, try to see what, it's something in the paper, like, where did ours, and it was just kind of like a runaround. It's like, never really got a straight answer. And, but it's not like the main reason. And I mean, I don't know much about her. Uh, she seemed like a very nice lady, um, really, really educated. I mean, disability lawyer. Um, who, I can't really say. Who would you say is favorite to win District Six? I think she is. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, I think she is. She, <laughs> that's that's uh, not good to say. Well, but I, I I get it. You know, like, you're, are you coming at it from like, are you an independent? Then are you have you have you secured the Republican Party's nomination? Is that how it works? I don't even think they give nominations in um, nonpartisan, and that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like it's I'm yeah. an outsider looking in. You know what right. I mean? And that's okay. the one thing I kind of learn is like, it's who you know. And I mean, it's kind of like buddy buddy system in yeah. the sense like um like and like this is like my first time running for anything like this you know what i mean this is i think melissa's third time so she has the infrastructure she has kind of the knowledge you know what i mean i'm still trying to figure out how to kind of post stuff and promote it on facebook you yeah know what i mean and, yeah so she has that that kind of support she knows the neighborhood association i'm learning like what neighborhood associations who's who in the district and stuff like that um so like I would honestly say she is the favorite. I mean, this is her third time running an election. Um, this is the first time she lost to Greg, then she won the second time, and now she's running and has the incumbent. Um, so, I mean, um, I just don't know much about her. I mean, that's one of the one things I'm kind of like running to kind of, kind of just, how you say it? I thought she didn't do, I'm, I'm getting kind of caught up in my words. That's but, not good. No, but what I'm trying to say is that, like, I, I think the district needs full-time representation. Representation. You know what I mean? I think she's doing her legal work and sometimes not takes her eye off the district. You know what I mean? You know, she says she doesn't, but it, I, I find it hard that she she's still practicing and running the district at, at a high level. So you'd say, like, maybe you're, like, the underdog coming in, and even though Melissa's focused, like, uh, or, or favored, like, you're, it, this is more like a, like a learning process for you? Or are you still kind of, like, hoping to, like, take a chunk out of the, the election? I'm, I'm hoping to take a chunk out of the election. Um, yeah. What I'm hoping, honestly, what I am hoping to do is hope to pull enough and that there's enough of us that it's a runoff. And then in the runoff, I think people will take me more seriously. I think once I get in front of people and tell them my ideas and stuff and how I feel on things and just kind of am able to express what I'm what I'm thinking and how I'm planning stuff, mm. then I think at that point, it's like, okay, I could turn a few more heads at that point. So I'm, what I'm really trying to do is get to that runoff if possible. What are some of the things that you're going to bring up during the runoff, you think? Just kind of the way, like... Just my, my thought process in the sense like I'm here to listen to everybody. I'm not I don't owe anybody anything. I'm running everything's running on my on off of my dime. Everything is it's I guess sweat equ equity where I'm putting the signs up, I'm handing out the flyers, I'm greeting everybody's hand. Uh, you know I mean hand in hand sh shaking everybody's hand. Um and just kind of like bring bring the voice back to the people. I mean, I, I like one of the one things I don't like is that um, they don't the current the current council is not taking a stand on the property. You know what I mean? And I think one of the one things is if you're in, you need to take a stand. I mean, people are looking at you to set an example. I mean, and and what's want, Prop B? Can you can you can you uh, bring that up for anybody I, who's not following closely? Yeah, so I noticed uh, I noticed that you were against Prop B. Yeah, yeah, I am against Prop B. So Prop B is the pretty much, and there's been so much said about there about Prop B that I sometimes get confused uh, of what it is. It's it. Well, let's say let's read let's read what it is real quick. Okay. All right. So Prop B. Prop B is the police. Let me read it. it. I just had it up right now. I was, I guess you read my mind, Joel. I was thinking about that Prop B. <laughs> uh -huh. So it's what happens when police can't use collect collective bargaining to negotiate contracts. So it's pretty much defunding the police a little bit. 
So I don't know is defunding the police. From what my understanding is, it just takes the right away from the, the police union to be a union, pretty much to collect a bargain as a union. Um, so and that's where it gets kind of twisted in the, in the defunding or not. Uh, but what from where my stance is, from my understanding of it, from the way I read it, it just states that the the police officers wouldn't be able to unionize, collect a bargain, like collect, like get together as a union and bargain with the city. Um, but what the way I feel, the way I feel is that if it does, if the if the officers want to bargain as a union, then they're more than welcome to. I think they should be able to bargain for wages and health care, but not for um, any in the disciplinary action. Any saying that. Are you typically for unions in general, or is this just for public workers? Honestly, I think unions are typically in general. I think unions are okay. You know I mean, if I think. If you can gather enough support to unionize, you should be able to. Interesting. I mean, I, okay. I did not was, expect yeah. you to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Neither did I. You, Man, I was going to argue with you. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no. The only reason I think the Prop B thing, it's, it's also, from what I understand, it's kind of trying to make police officers more accountable for their actions as well. Yes. Yeah. And like I totally agree. Like, Everybody can agree on police reform. I mean, everybody can agree. Like, one of the bullet points, like you said, like, it's a bullet point. You know what I mean? Police reform, it's a bullet point. Everybody wants it, but what are you going to do about it? You know what I mean? And the one thing I find is that, like, police reform and the contract are two different things in my eyes. So the city, like, the, the issue is the contract's bad. I mean, the contract's bad. The contract is the, the contract gives all the power to the arbitrator. You know what I mean? We need to fix that. That's what's bad about this whole. It's not the police union or the um, the citizens. Is that the contract's bad? We gave them the power. We agreed to that. The people in office agreed to that contract to give to the union. You know what I mean, and so the contract to me is bad. What I would love to see is in the next contract is um, a citizen review board, where the citizens would have a say. You know what I mean, or what goes on right now. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Hey, right now there is a review board, but it's non-binding. So the citizens can say, "Oh, that officer is fired." It goes to the arbitrator. The arbitrator says, "Oh no, we're I'm overturning this," and the, the officer is back on to the force. You know what I mean? So I would love to see something binding through the citizens, maybe with the union, bring them all together, so you know, a panel or something like that. But one thing I do want to say is that I I would want the city to postpone postpone any contract negotiations at this moment because they are negotiating at this moment. And I don't know. Uh, somebody today said, oh, they're not going to get anything done before May 1st. You never know. You never know. They, they may get spooked and they may say, let's get this done now. We'll take whatever, you know what I mean, just to get it done so we don't know what happens next year. Um, but the one thing would happen is a five-year contract with the eight-year ever, evergreen clause, which would be 13 years. So whatever happens on May 1st, if they did get a contract completed by then, would um, be for the next 13 years. So I would I would ask the city right now, council to, and the city, just postpone for a little bit, let the people speak, and then once on at May second, we can get together and see how to go, what our next steps are. That's understandable. That well, that argument yeah. I think takes place frequently with like the Supreme Court when there's an outgoing Congress or an outgoing president, and there's a Supreme Court. It's the same argument, you know. It's like, well, maybe we should let the people speak, you know, and then let the new president, pick, you know, if there is one, pick. <sighs> Trump. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Well, it happened. <laughs> it happened with Obama too. Like Obama, yeah. I think. But got, I liked Obama. You know, well, Obama. but Obama <laughs> got stonewalled by the Republicans. I think in Congress, yeah. something I can't remember exactly the details. But yeah, that's interesting. Um. Uh. So, uh, do you are you, do, Rob? Do you have any friends that are cops? Actually, and today I um one of the old kids from the center that I used to work at um one of the teams and he played on one of my basketball teams mm. he just graduated he got his uh badge pinned yesterday and he just graduated today from the police academy so he just became a cop um jeremiah congratulations i don't know if he'll see this but uh um, shout out jeremiah yeah so he, he became a cop he was a sheriff before let, let me off that first speeding ticket bro <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And then uh, I uh, I know a few cops, but not too well. Uh, police officers. Um, there used to be a coach, uh, and I think he's still on the force. He used to coach um, SA Hustlers basketball team. He was an officer. 
um, know him pretty well just from the basketball circuit. And a few other, um, I'm trying to think, um, some of the officers I work at, um, at my work, we have um, contract officers that kind of help us patrol and stuff like that. So I know them a little bit. Yeah, I would imagine you'd have to have a like a pretty hefty police presence there. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we have our own security, but well, we do contract with some SAPD officers. Right on. Yeah. I remember uh, being with the Greens back in 2012 and protesting during Occupy San Antonio in 2000. Yeah. Back when all when Occupy was happening and the police, I was surprised, were very cordial with us. They didn't beat us. It was like, uh, you know, and there was this one guy that was like protesting to uh, protect police pensions. And I, I had a feeling that I was like in the midst of a psychological operation to keep us all calm, to keep us from like breaking the windows or something. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just a conspiracy theory, but you know, <laughs> no, it was a, yeah, it was a, it was a weird time. I, I don't want to leave the wrong impression. Raymond knows this. I'm much more middle of the road now. Uh, you know, I'm kind of like what you said, you know, like I, like, I appreciate that you are trying to keep it as bipartisan as possible because that's the climate that we really need right now. It is. Yeah. And, um, I was actually talking to my wife about, um, doing this one and I was like, man, I got to write some stuff down and you kind of, yeah, you kind of, yeah, you kind of threw me for a loop. You're a little more, uh, more left leaning on some issues than, than I would have thought you were because, you know. Right. I just, thought that too, brother. I thought like that, uh, that your, your attention to uh, like inner city issues, you know, uh, it's not something that we hear from, from, from conservative people a lot, you know. And, and it's weird because, yeah, I, I, I get that surprised all the time, but it, some of it is just, it's life. It's, it's, how are you saying, living life in the sense that like, I worked in the inner cities and like I I worked like I drive to 1604 and it's beautiful and then in the inner cities I go and it's like you can't even drive down the street we go down the streets and it's like it's a roller coaster and it's not like uh, I say it's like it's not that they what well, the inner city wants this six six lane street they want a street where they can drive they can walk to the sidewalk I mean walk to the bus stop little things like that and it, and I guess just working with the population that I work with, hearing people's struggles and kind of what they want. And it's like I said, it's nothing big. Like when I was block walking, one of the gentlemen down there, one of the guys told me that all they wanted was a bigger H-E-B. I mean, the H-E-B that they have is small. And it was like, man, come on. I mean, like, can we get something to get a bigger H-E-B? That's one thing I would kind of, because right now, uh, Luby's is going out, so. Ah, oh, Luby's, you're breaking my heart. Don't bring that up. Rest in peace. Yeah. The non-flavored hey, food hey, for old people. Tomorrow, I'm trying to go out to their buffet. Uh, they have a yeah. buffet on the morning buffets. Uh, pancakes and bacon is what I'm trying to get tomorrow. Uh, hey. It's at 1030. Dude, I'll take their fried fish. Like uh, They sell it at H-E-B now, actually. They sell Luby's fried fish at H-E-B. Yeah, they have like the microwave things the microwave right. jump offs too yeah i haven't tried it yet yeah i'm glad you brought up heb we were this is one of the things we were talking about that was kind of like off subject you had uh you had right. issues what's with your beef yeah. what's your beef with heb <laughs> this is the real fucking question what's your beef? <laughs> so, with heb during the beginning of the pandemic uh i know a lot of people love heb um i know the role with heb i guess one of the one things is uh i'm I'm tired of going to H-E-B sometimes and not having a selection of stuff that I want. I'm real picky about what I eat, so there's certain things I like. I, I want. So one of the one things is like Borden, Borden's cottage cheese. I love Borden's cottage cheese. I'm not sure why, but if, to some some parts of H-E-B, some parts of the city I go to, they won't have it. They'll have their brand, or it's always the Hill Country Fair brand or whatever it's called. That It's there. It's dominating. I just want my selection. Another thing, the beginning of the pandemic, when um, everything was shutting down, HEB um, did not want to open up early for disabled or for the elderly. And they offered to, um, like, an, like a kindness, they were like, you can use flavor, flavor, whatever it's called. But um, it did charge a $5 or five dollars extra fee for that. And then, but the thing is that HEB owns flavor. So it was kind of like, yeah, we're trying like we're trying to look nice, but you're gonna use our you're gonna use our company. You know what I mean? In the sense, like one of the one things if they were not to say that they were genuine would have been like, hey, let's waive that fee for seniors. You know what I mean? Or something like that. 
So that's kind of where I, my little beef with H-E-B. I actually went to Walmart this morning. I was there at 6.03 a.m. And they were closed because they closed from 6 to 7. And I must be the only idiot in San Antonio that doesn't know this for for elderly people. And I thought that was real cool. And, you know, in any other situation, you know, like they were closed for like remodeling or like cleaning. I could have been pissed off and I could have been like, damn it. You know, the one day I come to Walmart, you know, they're closed. But you know that's that's cool you know you, like i'm glad that like they have a chance to 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 shop and socially isolate hey especially at the beginning of the pandemic when you couldn't get nothing you know what i mean we i had a hard time getting toilet paper bread milk you know what i mean and and when you're we all did yeah you know what i mean that was a time that it needed to be like right now i understand and i never got that honestly i never got that i understand how i get it but i don't get it and i will say that even though that sounds kind of no nah, yeah well, uh moronic but like h- how is reducing the hours of a store beneficial to people in the middle of a pandemic when you're trying to space people out you know what i mean that's that that to me was like i don't i, I didn't get that it's like okay so we want more we want the people to come but we're gonna make it shorter time frame that they can shop so you're packing the same amount of people in a shorter time frame I mean, well, that's what I didn't get. It's, it's, it's well, I'm, <clears throat> I have a relative, my brother, he actually, my relative, he's a stalker, a manager stalker for HEB. And he said the reason why COVID, they had to do that is because they were getting overwhelmed when people were coming in. And yeah, it's limited to one or two items per person, but they would pay separately with families and they would get all the shit they needed. So that's what kind of made the hours happen like that, you know, just because, you know, they need to shorten the hours because they would run out of stuff by like, you know, 2 p.m. And they'd yeah. be like, oh, we're out of this, we're out of that. Like, we're waiting for the trucks. You know, it's kind of like that. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, oh, I oh so, so they didn't have supply. So they were trying to spread out yeah, like the demand with the supply. They, they would literally have, you know, I don't know how they order their trucks or their inventory, but everything would run out at a certain time. And it's like, well, why are we going to be open until three, four, five in the morning? If we don't have anything, like you can get soda, like that's it. Like it would kind of clean house, but yeah, man. no, I understand what you're saying though, with the whole fee with favor and all that stuff. Like we actually talked about that on the phone too. Just, you know, favor, they, they already jack up the prices. If you get, use favor or any of those um, delivery things, they already jack up the prices for the groceries. You know, if, I don't know what the actual percent is, but it's, you know, probably like 10, 15%. Plus they charge you the fee. And if you don't want to be a fucking animal, you have to tip the person. So it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. 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 So, I mean, so like that was my kind of my beef with them. Uh, I mean, what can I, what I, what I can do is shop at Walmart, I guess. I don't know what else I can do. Man, Walmart is so, man, I worked for Walmart for about, seven months six seven eight months ah that place man i remember one time i got sick and they sent me to the doctor i had like the flu i was like throwing up like i was just i was working at um i was working as the um overnight not overnight but like uh mid 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 morning um stalker like non-con at the um warehouse in New Braunfels and I was sick and they would have a thing if you were like one minute late you would get written up so I was there and I was sick and they told me like, hey, you need to go to Texas Med, la la la. So I was like, okay. So I went to Texas Med and they asked me to fill out, um, before I left, Walmart said, you have to fill out this form or your insurance isn't going to cover it. I was like, what do you mean? They're like, well, I have the doctor fill out this form. And the doctor was like, what? He was just like, okay. And I started reading the form. The form states that if Walmart Distribution Center does not approve, not by their doctors, but by walmart itself if they don't approve your note then you're gonna get like a third step right up wow. so so i sent that i went to the doctor he was like dude you're very sick like you you have the flu you have bronchitis like you need you need to take like two weeks off and i was like oh. so i was like all right whatever so um i did what the doctor said i only took a week off but when i came back they said that oh your um your 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 doctor's note it was declined by walmart so I was like, okay, what does that mean? They're like, well, we're going to need, we're going to write you up and you're going to have to write down a statement saying why you won't do that again. 
And I said, I'll sign a write-up. I'm not writing out any fucking statement. And they're <laughs> like, well, they're like, no, you have to. I'm like, no, I don't. I really don't. And they said, well, so-and-so, the upper management guy is here. He wants to talk to you. I'm like, all right. So he came down. And he was just like, this is part of Walmart's agreement that you signed. I was just like, I didn't sign anything like that. So they said, you need to write something. So I wrote not good things on there. They said, <laughs> they said, you can't use vulgarity. I was just like, okay. So I changed it. I changed it. And they're like, no, you have to, you have to make it sound it. positive. I was like, I'm not going to do it. So they ended up giving me like a, a pretty big write-up almost to be fired. And I just, I scheduled my vacation. And I never went back, but I just thought that was <laughs> insane. I was just like, what the hell? It was ridiculous. I just couldn't get over it. So that kind of stuck in my craw about, you know, Walmart, just the way they, cause they're like, they're like, they got mad at me for wearing, uh, I was wearing like a Bill Clinton shirt. There's no, there's no, there's no uniform there. There's nothing. You're just yeah. there working at four in the morning by yourself, you know? So I was wearing like a Bill Clinton shirt and uh, the manager. But that's a little out. incendiary though, bro. <laughs> Dude, I had to be at work at four in the morning. I don't know what the Yeah, fuck I mean no was. nobody's but, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you know, but they also in their little video, their little Nazi party video <laughs> that they make you watch before, they're like, Oh, we don't have like during election time we we want you to, you know, wear your party shirt. Like they're very supposedly like that. Well, the manager pulled me aside and he wrote me up and he told me to put my shirt inside out. And I was just like, what? And there was this one guy that I worked with. He was an older so they, guy. So they encouraged you to wear uh, partisan colors during election season, but then you, but you, then you're punished yeah. for wearing a, a candidate shirt. That's why I was like, what? And I was like, it's a goof shirt. Like it's just a shirt, you know? And so I turned it inside out. I signed my write up and I asked that older guy and he was just like, oh yeah, like they say they will, but he was like, they made me take the stick, my Obama sticker off the back of my car. I was like, what? I was like, holy shit. Uh, I don't know. That place there. And this is, you know, I'm not talking shit. This is actual first person experience. So that's why I was just like Walmart, man. They have good prices. I still shop there. I'm not going to lie. But were, were you full time at the Walmart or was it just kind of part time work? No. So it was full time, but they cut me. So I was working three, three twelves or three fourteens or something like that. But the last day they would cut me to where I was like right at 35 hours on the oh. third day. So I couldn't get my full benefits. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I know there's a lot of talk about uh, raising kind of like the, the PTO time for non non full time uh, employees and stuff like that. So I kind of just wanted to get your feel on that. Yeah. Just, like, but yeah, that was that was like a experiment because I've you know I've been doing security installation my whole working career and I kind of wanted to change a little bit and I was like I'm going back to what I know. This is a little yeah. Yeah, and in the Walmart situation it's kind of like um, the situation I sometimes run with my clients who, who are homeless and they they got to go into these leases where they have so many rules and and like I want to say like don't sign it but like what are you gonna do like you're gonna be homeless. Or you're gonna sign the lease, you know what I mean? It's kind of like that. It's like you want the job, or you're gonna, you know what I mean? It's kind of the same situation. Yeah. Right? So. What other what other things you got going on in your private life? You mentioned you had uh, three dogs uh, the other day, and uh, have you heard the barking? Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. I had it. Yeah, they've been barking. One of the, so right now it's just like I said. Um, right now I'm t I'm guardian of a 15 year old. Um, he was part of our basketball team uh, with my older group and then just kind of stuck around. We kind of bonded a little bit and then he kind of got in a situation where he needed to find a place to live. And then, so I brought him in here and he's been here for the last like three to four years. And so taking care of him. So almost kind of like a parent role. Um, and you then you took that of, on through the, uh, through the community center. Um, yes and no. I, uh, so like my basketball team uh, that was, it wasn't, it was at the community center. Our guys would all get the community center, so we became like a team. But mm -hmm. it was an outside league that we kind of ran with. Um, so he would show up at the community center, and we just kind of bonded. And he was always around our guys and kind of just hooping with us. And then cool. from there, he kind of got into not, nothing bad on his part. Just something happened with his family, and he had to come 
in 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 some family situations you know and in the hood it's almost impossible to get away from like certain situations you're either living in the middle of one or it's right outside your door yeah no no i yeah like i yeah like and that's some of the experiences and that's even from working at the homeless shelter is just learning like what happened i mean like it could have been domestic violence just kind of and it's weird because sometimes us being humans we're just kind of petty you know i mean just petty and it's like little things it's like what happened there you know what i mean and it's just like like honestly really and so I, like he, he's good now yeah you know i mean he's here he's good um his family is kind of more settled and everything so it's all good there but at that time he really didn't have a place and this would probably be one of the better options he could be and so i brought him in um so so yeah so i have been dealing with him he still does his basketball so like i like i said y'all he, hit the gym did, you mentioned you had a pretty like badass gym at, at home yeah we we do i don't know if i can flip this over real quick I don't know if I can <laughs> see it. oh yeah nice go. nice the trophies are back there so you got so, the yeah. little you got the little man cave going on like me man yeah <laughs> the reason i do it from here because it, this room has the best lighting so that's why i do all my stuff from here and stuff um so he works out in here we work out um one of the one things i try to keep his schedule the same thing as we were doing before like he didn't choose to run for city council i'm not gonna say we're we're all attention goes away from you and now on to me right. so we're still trying to do the basketball stuff even with the other guys just kind of working out it's been a little bit rough with the pandemic um, so we kind of just, you know what I mean, just kind of work through it day to day. Um, just kind of basic life, basic struggles. You know, I have a dog right now. Um, he, he got sick last weekend. So it's been, uh, my dogs are spoiled. Um, so it's um, trying to feed one while the other one's trying to get the food that the other one has. Because I usually <laughs> give them um, the dry food. And now he's eating canned food. So we have two boys and one girl. What what uh, what what breeds and what names? Uh, Sandy. I don't even know what breeds they are. Sandy is right uh, some kind of big, wild, crazy dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Lee. He's a Labrador pit mix. And nice. then we have another dog, Smokey. Um, and so um, Smokey has allergies. Lee has the stomach issues right now. And Sandy is just wild, and she's the one that's barking all the time. And, and those are kind of ironic names, right? Like Smokey has allergies, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it's been, it's been, uh, it is, and I can't complain. I mean, like I love being busy. Um, I love staying. Like I said, it's what. 10 11 we can go all night i'm not sure how much time y'all have no yeah uh, we're we're right at about an hour on the podcast so we can start wrapping it up man i just wanted to see if you, there's anything else you want to include before we get out may 1st is the election right which is like yeah. a, a little over a week away yeah um I, right now um early voting is going on i think it's going on to the 27th or 28th okay and then after that um may 1st is the election any support um i appreciate it um just kind of want to get my voice out there kind of um and i'm trying to meet with anybody as much as i can that's one thing that i kind of learned um i don't know i never done this before so i don't know how different it is from the past where kind of and one of the one things is i don't like um bothering people i don't like bothering people so i'm always like when You're i'm out the wrong like, business then my friend i know i know and that's just <laughs> Because I'm like out there and I see somebody with their family and they're having a good time and I'm like, I don't want to go bother them and I'm like sneaking up like hey, in the background like hey man can if you got a chance like, take a look at my information and you know what I mean so I'm but I'm learning I'm learning kind of getting people like hey man I need you to vote for me and stuff like that kind of that kind of vibe um, but. Like I said I'm kind of real laid back. I mean, I enjoy stuff like this. I can talk all night. Um, my, I, like I was nervous in this. I just didn't want it to go bad. And well, it would have nah. been it would have been a lot more fun, and I probably would have gotten more listens and views if we had drawn some blood. But you were just <laughs> you were all dry, man. You didn't you didn't give us anything. So no. <laughs> so best yeah, of you, luck. 
Hey, there's still time. Y'all can just take as many shots as y'all can. You know? <laughs> <laughs> nah. The thing is that, like, that's how I am. Like, even when I was young, I was the, I don't know if you ever, like, run into those kids that are just kind of just there chilled. And it's like, that. that's how I am. That's how I, I've been. It's just like, I'm more of a, I love to watch and then kind of, observe, like, watch, observe, and then kind of decide. And that's how I've always been in my life. And that's how, if I get into office, that's how I'll be. In a sense, like, let me watch, like, even the prop B, prop A, I want to see what happens. You know what I mean? And then we're going to have to be, we're going to have to work afterwards either way. I mean, if prop A, or I mean, if prop B passes, I'm, I'm for prop A. Prop A is the using um, city bond money for anything not public or changing the wording so we can widen the scope of um, what we could use bond funding for. Right on, man. So... I'm uh, open. What? No, no, I was just going to draw us out. Uh, Raymond, you got anything left? Uh, no, man, I think I'm good. Um, getting to know you better. This is a little change of pace for, for Joel and I doing a talking with somebody who's a little more professional, not just one of our drunk buddies, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how much more professional I am. I was going to ask you, um, what what do you think y'all cover? I saw something about the crypto, the crypto coin. What is uh, that's, squ- that's yeah, my boy Joel, yeah. Yeah, Squawk Out started out as Block Squawk. It was a it was a a, a, a Bitcoin price stream on Twitch, and then it kind of turned into uh, a podcast about crypto, and now it's open format. So like I, I like I'll still cover it occasionally, but I just basically have like all the price tickers up, and I haven't taken them off yet. But it's still something that I'm intensely interested in. I trade it, and Dude. there's a there's a lot of different disciplines within finance, obviously. But the one that I choose to focus on just for my own personal like enjoyment, you know, is is trading crypto and specifically financial analysis because there's I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, technical analysis because there's fundamental analysis, which is what Warren Buffett does. He goes in, he looks at a business, he looks at their their, you know, their profit, you know, margin and everything. And he decides based off of the facts, whether he wants to buy that company or not. And what a technical analyst does is they look at charts, you know, and they, and they base their stuff off of that. So I was doing that for a little while. No, me right now, me and Raymond are kind of have like an open format. I, th- um, format. I think Raymond does a lot of like, uh, like, uh, what, what do you, what would you say, brother? Like family values uh-huh. kind of thing. Yeah, so it started off um, the on-call thing. It started off that I had like a little, almost like a blog thing going on on Tumblr and then on my Facebook that was getting a little pickup, just telling like stories from work because I used to go out of town a lot and I, you know, worked work in construction. So I would just tell crazy stories about, you know, at a hotel, my shit being stolen or just stuff like that. So that turned into like me you know, I've always been a podcast, you know, nerd. I've always listened to podcasts, Mark Marin, all that. And um, I just was like, you know what? I'm going to just get a mic and try it. And it ended up being my buddy, Josh Frazier, and I, we just started talking into my laptop. And that was like the first couple episodes. And then the SoundCloud also, days. Yeah, the SoundCloud days was those won't see the light of day. I've decided <laughs> <laughs> like they're good, but it's it's behind a paywall. But I don't know if I'll ever release those because some of them, you know, I, I was partying a lot at the time, so it was a lot of <laughs> it was a lot of a lot of fuckery I, going I'm a on. Da- I'm a I'm a dad now, so it's a little different. But you know, we talk a lot about religious, you know, beliefs. You know, talk about just my wife and I when we do it, we just kind of ramble, talk about our day events, kind of talk about some current events. Um, and then whenever I talk to friends and, you know, things like that, it's more of getting to know them. And also I've interviewed a, you know, a band I've interviewed, uh, people I don't really know. And it's just kind of like getting to know them, just how they grew up and pretty much like that. It kind of turned into a little bit of a religious rant on my end for a little (laughs) while, but I kind of was going through something. So I think I'm at peace with no religion (laughs) <laughs> the, the way I like to look at it, Rob, is like you're kind of eavesdropping on a couple of friends at a bar and there's an interesting yeah. conversation that you're listening. Sometimes it's interesting. Sometimes we sound like complete idiots. <laughs> so, but 
it's I've, fun to do. Yeah, yeah. man, I, and I appreciate your interest, really. I do, and uh, and and you've sold me at least. So uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing your name on May first, brother. Thank you so much, yeah. man. Thank you, all guys. All right, guys, get out there and vote. Uh, give the boy Robert Hernandez uh, a chance. May first, he's, a, lo- he's May, a local guy. May first, I mean, San Antonio what, what West Side. Uh huh. One more thing. Yeah, I want you to vote for me, but at the end of the day, vote. You know what I mean? Go through some of the issues, go vote. I One of the one things I've, I've learned in this is it is difficult to find people that vote. You know what I mean? Um, even if... Nowadays. Yeah, yeah you know I mean, running, like, the they're telling me the numbers aren't haven't been that great at the early voting sites. So just running the, this process is like, we need people to vote, man. Um, you know what I mean? Get a little bit informed. Because at the end of the day, it affects everybody. You know what I mean? You can get those streets fixed. But um, thank y'all for having me, guys. I had a good time. I was, I was super nervous about this. The anxiety of, from even the 7 o'clock text. I was like, whoa, what is going on? Yeah, that's my bad, brother. All <laughs> right, guys. Good? Well, we'll see you guys soon. Uh, Rob, thanks for coming out. Ray, we'll talk to you soon as well. All right. You see Peace. you guys later. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. I'm out of here. Um, thanks for hanging out. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Sorry, I'm not sure if you guys heard that intro. I had, like, the audio blasting. Um, I'll hit you guys up soon. That's Raymond calling. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.